On this particular journey, we are examining element types meshing and the importance of a converged mesh. And we talked about shell elements, also known as plate elements, and that they are generally utilized for thin geometry. And in this video, we're going to take a quick look at how we can use Autodesk Inventor Nastran to create some of these shell elements or plate elements. So here we are with Autodesk Inventor Professional 2020 and we have an assembly or sub-assembly that we are using to look at different parts and in this particular scenario we're going to imagine that somebody wants us to examine this fender here perhaps they give us a force or a pressure imagine somebody's going to step up on this and we want to know can it sustain that particular load of course we know by now that we don't need to analyze this whole assembly just to figure that out so I open up that small sub-assembly and from there I can open up the individual part and here we have the fender that we want to analyze. If we take a look at this perhaps somebody shared this model it was already completed for us what we can see is that it has a very small thickness right it is currently a volume but shell elements are just planar geometry the the plane or the space that these shell elements can be within can be 3D geometry, right? So all this geometry is not necessarily confined to just an XY plane or just a YZ plane. Uh, however, we don't need the thickness. What we want for shell elements is just a surface. And there are tools within Inventor Nastran that will help with that. So let's go ahead and go over to the environment. And from the environments tab, we're gonna go into our Nastran so here we are uh, inside the Inventor Nastran environment and again what we want to do is convert this 3D geometry to surface geometry and if we look up towards the top here there's a panel labeled prepare and in the prepare panel particularly what we want to take a look at are these options right here so there's three different options that will allow you to perform this task one is offset surfaces and generally when this is used is when I want to select a surface we'll go ahead and select the command when I want to select the surface you can see that it has selected the top surface of this fender and now what I can do is tell it how much I want to offset the geometry from that surface so I can offset it in one direction or the other direction so that the program sees it uh, at a particular location so if I wanted to select a surface again and I want to move it to the mid surface then I can offset it one half of the thickness of the geometry and then I can tell the program what the thickness of the surface should be seen as other than using that we can go to mid surfaces and there I can manually go through my model and I can select on a body and then I can say OK and have the program then create the mid surface Alternatively, what I generally do is I'll just go with fine thin bodies and I'll let the program explore the geometry that I have there. And you can see that it will identify a geometry that it sees as being relatively thin and is able to convert to a thin body. So we'll say OK to that. We'll select that body and again say OK. And having done so, you can see now that the geometry is just a surface, right? And if I go over you can see that we have mid surface and it shows that it's three millimeters and it also creates that idealization that is a mid surface so if I double click on that mid surface you can see that it has changed the type to shell elements as opposed to being solid elements or some type of line element and you can additionally see that it has extracted what the thickness of this geometry is so this is one of the other advantages of using shell elements or plate elements is that we can very quickly if I were to go ahead and continue on with the setup I define a material constraints loads um, and we examine the results we can come back if those results let's say the deflection is too high we can just change this thickness very quickly from say three millimeters to five millimeters or six millimeters and run the analysis again and see what our new results are or like so it's very quick to iterate whenever you are using shell elements with the thickness you don't have to go back and change the original CAD model 
So I'm just going to go ahead and say OK to that. And then what we're going to do is go into um, our mesh settings. And in our mesh settings here, you can see it has a size. We can change what that size would be. We can adjust the slider. Or I can just say generate mesh. And there you can see that it has very quickly created for us the mesh on that surface. So that's how you convert something that is a volume to the shell elements or plate elements. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a, another example. Let me finish from the Autodesk Inventor environment. Here inside of Inventor, I've created some surface geometry. Basically, all I've done was sketch the circle, and I've sketched a, an additional circle, and then I created a patch between them. So if somebody doesn't necessarily already hand us some completed geometry, if we obtain a project where we know that we need to analyze something, and thinking ahead, we say that we want to utilize shell elements, then right from the very beginning, maybe what I do is in an inventor, I create my geometry via surface geometry. So that way, whenever I go from environments and I go into Autodesk Inventor Nastran, I don't need to utilize the tools to convert that 3D geometry to shells. Instead, it's already surface or planar geometry right from the very start. So what I'm going to do is go into idealizations and create a new idealization here that it's going to be shell elements. And of course, I have to define a thickness here because recall it was never modeled with any thickness. So I can define what the thickness of this geometry is going to be. Let's say it's going to be uh, an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to select my geometry. And then from there, what we can do, we could also define a material if we want. Why don't we do that real quickly? We'll select a material, we'll select something from the Autodesk library. We'll say OK. So now I've defined the material and the thickness. We can say OK. And from that point we can generate the mesh. And there we can see that we have the mesh associated with our geometry. So then I could proceed with adding boundary conditions, adding the loads to it, and performing the analysis. And again, if I needed to, if I wanted to change that thickness, I just come right back to the idealization. I can go in here and I can type in a new thickness.